Hi, I'm Pete Hill, and this is the D Word Podcast, where we talk dementia. Welcome along to another edition of the podcast, and this week we have something truly original. My guest is Steve Kiley, who has turned his hobby as a metal detectorist into a number of reminiscence programmes. So how did Steve get the idea in the first place? Well, first, uh, thank you, Pete, for having me on the uh, show. I appreciate it very much. Um, And how did it start? You know, it's kind of an interesting story. I was in an assisted living facility. I don't know if you if that translates an assisted living facility. Okay, so I'm in there and I'm looking at the walls and I see on the wall some pictures or images of old artifacts. And I thought I'm a metal detectorist and bottle digger and maybe seniors would be interested in seeing some of the artifacts that I have found. And so that's sort of how it started. And it was sort of a a collision of my occupational therapy background with my metal detecting hobby. And all of a sudden it became a program for seniors. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's a kind of strange route, isn't it? To start with uh, kind of your your metal detecting. Um, I've seen a quote for you that says uh, you never know what interesting memories lie beneath the surface, which is obviously true. And what, what kind of stuff are you finding? Yeah, it's that's half the fun of the program is you never know what's going to resonate with seniors. And so the things that I'm finding are, believe it or not, as a metal detector, you find marbles, you find glass, too, you find bottles. So you start off looking for metal, of course, but you find what's called bottle pits and things like that. So um, marbles has really resonated. That's one of the biggest ones. I don't know how popular uh, in the UK uh, marbles were in the 1940s and 1950s. So, yeah, very popular. It seems like nationally, like throughout the world, marbles was pretty big. But that's one. Uh, milk bottles, another one. Uh, milk was delivered to people's homes. So they go back in time and think about how they used to fight for with their siblings, jokingly, of course, um, for the cream that's on the top, you know, early when you just got the milk. So milk bottles tend to bring people back and marbles tend to do that. Old pocket watches or remnants of, you know, those kinds of things. So it's just um, you never know what's going to resonate uh, with the seniors, but they they seem to enjoy those and others. Yep. Yeah, and I, I, I guess it's, you know, uh, talking to people living with dementia, sometimes very difficult to communicate. And mm. um, when you find one of those things that you, you've got something in common, it's a really good conversation starter. It, it really is. It's sort of a, a prompt, right, or a catalyst uh, to discussions. And the best feeling I get is when I'm doing these programs, so here I am, I walk into the building, I've got three or four crates of things, I put them out on the table and I start, I have a PowerPoint presentation and we, we start off with something very boring with, uh, uh, an old nail that I find. And that's usually an indication of how old a site is. So if I find a square nail or a cut nail, I know it's from the 1800s, early 1900s. So I start off with that, just sort of give an overview of what I'm looking for, but you're right. Now I start the program and it's very satisfying when people chime in, right? So you get, one person who might start to talk about old memories of playing marbles, as I said. And then all of a sudden you have others that sort of, it becomes uh, synergistic. You know, people start to chat here and there and, and really talk about real details. And that's the interesting thing from a dementia perspective, right? They can remember the bag, the color of the bag that the marbles were in and who they played with, you know. And uh, I know as I get older too, my short-term memory starts to, you know, not be as strong, but I can also remember things from my youth uh, much with more clarity sometimes. So anyway, it's interesting to see how that happens with uh, these patients and these residents at these different locations. Yeah, it's fascinating, actually. Yeah, it it must be a bit of a two-way street. I mean, obviously, you're starting off conversations, but you must be learning a lot as well. Man, you nailed it. You nailed it. Every single time, and you're right, it's, you know, so rewarding, uh, for me as well, because you're exactly right. Every single time I do a program, I leave there and I think that was cool because why I learned something new about an item. You know, you can Google search and you can find out a lot of information and you really do 
find out a lot of information about some of these artifacts. But when you have someone explain to you what the real deal was, you know, how they fixed those pocket watches when they broke or the specific games that they played when they played marbles. For instance, when I was a kid, we didn't play marbles. We used to, our game probably was, as it was related to that, is scaling cards, like baseball cards. We used to do that. I don't know if, if you're familiar with that, but that was our sort of game of that time. But I don't, didn't know a whole lot about marbles. But anyway, that's one example of, yeah, you learn something every single time and it's extremely rewarding because that's what I really enjoy. That's why I picked up the hobby, you know, in the first place. So it's uh, it's a win-win situation, no doubt. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, when I was uh, working with people living with dementia, they told me how to play dominoes. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it very much is a, a two-way street. I mean, you've, you've got a uh, a few programs on offer tell us a little bit about the uh you know the programs that you do offer sure it's really two in in uh to simplify so we do a local program i live in massachusetts so massachusetts and rhode island is within driving distance for a local program so like i say i bring in the artifacts to these senior centers and nursing homes and assisted living facilities and there's a one-hour program we provide, you know, the artifacts themselves with the PowerPoint presentation to sort of offer some context to each artifact. And so that's one program, the local program. Then we have a membership program. So the membership program is four of those live programs. Now it's virtual, right? That's the difference between the local program and the membership program. But we also pro- provide like a 52 week a year program where you actually have reminiscence activities that you can do with seniors or a senior each and every week. And some of it's reminiscence bingo, old newspaper articles from the 40s, actual newspaper articles from the 40s and 50s. And so each week uh, has new and interesting um, uh, reminiscence programs included in each week, if that makes sense. Yeah. So those are the two programs, a local program and a membership uh, program. Yeah, yeah. He says, do you think we kind of um, don't value some of those old items, like you were saying about old newspaper cuttings and whatever, mm. uh, and and the uh, you know the power that they can produce, kind of mm. later on in time? Mm. Yeah, you know something. Uh, I think the newspaper articles in particular, because they're the actual newspaper articles. So the artifacts do the same thing. It's it's that imagery, I think. But when you look at the newspaper articles, again, I love it because I get to learn something each and every time I, I discover a new article or ad or thing that I want to include in the program. But it really does put things in perspective. Um, and some of it is as simple as retail prices. You know, if you see cars advertised and other items and you're like, oh, my God, you know, that, that was the price then. Uh, so something like that or the the news of the day, which you know, isn't as, as pleasant sometimes when I, and it was sort of an eye opening thing. I probably don't want to go down that road too much, but all, all I need to say is, you know, things were tough and, you know, tough times, uh, during that period. And, uh, so some of that I try to limit a little bit of because I don't want it to be sort of a negative thing, but I try to keep the, the headlines positive, but it just sort of an eye opener for me that, yeah, obviously. Uh, difficult times in the 40s, early 40s, in particular, late 30s, um, and so forth. So anyway, you do you do learn something, and it's definitely the imagery that sparks the the memories. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Sure. And and I can't help but mention here, you know, metal detecting is uh, a hobby, a a passion of mine. And I've been I've actually only been doing it for about five years now. But I do watch some of these metal detectors in the in the UK and in France and so forth. And I. I can't help but mention to you, since I'm speaking to you, how jealous I am of the history. You know, here in the United States, we find something, or I do, I found some items, you know, that were from the 1700s. 
And for us, that's incredibly old. You know, that's that's fantastic. And I get I get pretty jazzed up about that. You know, some old silver reals from the 1700s, old belt buckle, uh, old uh, shoe buckles, uh, old pewter spoons, those kinds of things from the 1700s. In the UK, you know, you got <laughs> things that are thousands of years old. So, you know, it, it is amazing to put things in context about about history, no doubt about it. So I don't think there's any... I don't know of anyone who quite does it like this, uh, uh, although there are metal detectorists who do history, you know, and I find that fascinating, too. They kind of uh, some people just find items and that's it. They display them. They talk about them. They're excited about them. But some one in particular I'm thinking about in the United States, he um, sort of relates it to history, American history. And I, I find that fascinating. But you're right. I don't know of anyone who. It must be because of my occupational therapy background. That's the only reason why I sort of, I think, uh, guided me to that uh, reminiscence program. But I don't think there's anyone that does this that I'm aware of anyway. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you are, um, you know, you, you metal detectorist, I mean, um, what kind of sites do you aim at or, or you know, where do, where do you look? Yeah. And, and that's. You know, a lot of uh, metal detectorists in the United States is sort of a, a joke that it's usually a guy about my age um, who's wearing sandals and black socks and he's walking around, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But, you know, walking on the beach. Right. So they're on the beach. That's the imagery uh, for me. I enjoy finding I, I don't uh, do that. Um, not that I haven't done it a couple of times, but I like to find these old sites. So now with technology, there's uh, an app that I use. And I can actually look at a map of what it used to be. So meaning I'm standing at a point and the, it shows me on a map of like 1880 uh, where that point is. So that's what I basically do. I try to find, you know, old sites and I use technology to help me find some of those old sites. And that's um, that's half the fun of it, too. N- not only learning from the seniors, but I enjoy actually um finding these old sites too and researching them. And that's part of, uh, like I say, the education and, and the learning piece. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, most definitely. I mean, uh, looking at, uh, on your website, you've got other things as well, like uh, a lifetime memory journal, which is, uh, you know, a really interesting aspect of things as well, because, um, um, you know, we tend to take things for granted in our past sometimes, don't we? And don't yeah. uh, kind of, you know, dwell on those things, whereas something like that gives us the opportunity to do that. Yeah. And, and Pete, that's uh, that's something, I, you know, that I feel strongly about that I like in the program. And, you know, when I do the local programs in particular, I hear these. I find them very fascinating stories, some interesting stories. And I just think. It'd be, it's a great opportunity to document these things, you know, and uh, with a lifetime memory journal, that's part of the memory. Thank you for mentioning that. Actually, that's part of the, the program where an activities director or a caregiver is prompted or the scene is prompted by this artifact. And all of a sudden, a flood of memories might come out and some details and some interesting stories. And it's an opportunity. That's all it is an opportunity to document some of these interesting stories and memories. So yeah, that's part of the, thanks for bringing that up. Actually, that's part of the program as well. An important part of the program uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, You're right. I don't take it for granted, you know, Um, definitely mention that it's much better to hear stories from seniors than to Google search. You know Um, it brings, it brings the artifacts to life that the seniors do uh, for me and telling me all these stories and, and, that puts things in context. However, the you know, by being able to research things and have some imagery and put that artifact in context and for the senior to see that, that's what helps to prompt all all the different uh, stories and memories. So, yeah, we, we are lucky. I don't take it for granted. I mean, I'm still amazed, right, by that. Even the technology for finding these sites you know, where I can have this map in the palm of my hand and it's a map of, like I say, 1880. And even though I'm standing on, uh, you know, a street that was designed in the 60s or 70s, it shows me on a 1880 map and helps me to find some of these old sites that have sort of been forgotten. 
So you're right. Technology is a big, big part of the overall ability for me to have uh, the program. So, yeah, definitely yeah. helpful. Uh, keeps his radio show going as well, to be honest. Because, you know, I, got, I couldn't have done this probably 10 years ago in, in terms of uh, technology. Um, you've got a blog on the site as well. We've got some, uh, some interesting uh, articles. And I think it, it all kind of, it's a big mishmash that all feeds together, isn't it? That, uh, you know, it's, it's all about communication, really, and getting people talking. Yeah. And, and you know, something that's definitely, um, you're right. The blog is, is the goal of the blog is to get people talking, right? To get people thinking, um, to get maybe the activities directors in the nursing homes or assisted living facilities to maybe, you know, bring that up too. I think one of the articles is about marbles. There's another one about, I don't know how I describe this, but, uh, there was a, uh, cowboys in the United States were popular, uh, hop along Cassidy and, you know, and Roy Rogers and others. Right. So I found what looked like a cap gun, uh, you know, uh, does that resonate to a cap gun? Like, you know, so I thought it was that, but it was a, a hop along Cassidy, uh, gun, which was a slide projector from the forties. Now this is one of the, um, you, you had said what some of the things you find, right. And everything's different as far as it resonating with people, but this hop along Cassidy, uh, they, they love that, you know, and it brings them back to the Western cowboys of the forties and the fifties. So, you know, here I am Googling, thinking it's a cap gun, but then I put in the, the trademark and the markings and all of a sudden it's a hop along Cassidy slide projector that looks like a gun. But anyway, that's one of the ones that I bring in that uh, is definitely one that resonates with a good majority of, uh, the senior population. But you're right. The blog is, is the goal is just to, put that out there and hopefully get people talking about those cowboys of the forties and the fifties. And, uh, yeah, the artifact is just a prompt and you know, it's funny, Pete, you could probably, isn't it kind of amazing, right? This stuff was in the ground, you know what I mean? And talk about finding new life. It's so it's kind of cool to me, right? Something that was basically someone's trash or discarded or, or, or dropped. Right. And now is, is providing, stimulation, entertainment, uh, good memories, you know? And so that's, that's kind of cool. You know, it's kind of a, a neat, a neat thing. No doubt. Yeah. Really. Uh, you yeah, know, it's exciting and, uh, yeah, it's great to look, to look back at those things. And I think it goes back to what we were saying earlier in the conversation that perhaps we take for granted a lot, uh, of the stuff that we have, uh, and it's, uh, I don't know, how, how do you think the world's going to go on? Because, uh, you know, obviously we now see that people are less likely to have collections of things because we're into the world mm. of downloads and, you know, uh, probably, you know, your life is in the cloud instead of in front of you now. <laughs> um, which yeah. is, you know, it's, it's the way things, I guess, will progress. Yes. Well, I think my wife would, would prefer that a lot of my artifacts are in the cloud. <laughs> I've got a, I got a spot in the cellar, <laughs> so it's all mine, my spot. But uh, that's that's funny you say that. And you're right. Um, I, you know, I speak once in a while to antique dealers and and things. And you're right. That how did you? I mean, you, the, I'm told that the trend is people don't want stuff. They don't want stuff. <laughs> They're trying to get rid of stuff, right? So yeah, I don't know what that's going to mean to the value of artifacts and antiques and things like that but um yeah that's all changed a lot and will people how will they reminisce in the future i don't know you know although ironically i guess the most popular antiques and artifacts now are what i wouldn't even consider that old but technology games from the 80s and 70s you know you know old games that they used on your tv and so forth so but things have changed from that perspective, too. I think our desire or need to have antiques around is probably decreasing and uh, our interest in it is probably decreasing as a whole. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out, because you're right. It's it's on the cloud. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's that's the, that's the thing now. So, yeah. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health 
Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. Yes, on, on the website too, there's a uh, an image that I created that says basically just that. You know, you start off with a, a stimulus, right, or a prompt, an artifact, and you don't know what direction, just what you said. So, you know, you start off with that milk bottle, milk bottles delivered. Oh, you think about delivery men, you know, and oh, they used to come in the morning and how the morning was. And oh, I used to fight with my fight. When I say fight, I'm putting air quotes, you know, to get the the cream on the top. And now you talk about your siblings, you know what I mean? So yeah, it, it's, uh, you don't know where it's going to go. And that's half the fun, you know? So you have, say, I bring, there's 50 artifacts in each program. I have six different programs. And so when I start to talk about an artifact, I might have done the same program the day before or the week before, and it goes in a whole different direction, you know. Um, soda, I, I think of this one. In the United States, we have this soda called Moxie. It's not popular anymore. It was popular in the 40s and 50s. And I'll have one group that, as a whole, they'll be like, oh, I loved Moxie soda. I remember those that, uh, those old bottles. And then the next, you know, program I do, that was terrible. That was the worst, you know, and they'll talk about their experience with the, uh, so you just don't know, you know, you, you don't know where it's going to go. And an intro, one quick story. We're talking about, uh, not pocket, pocket watches, but, uh, pocket knives. And I said, boys and men and, and women, we don't, they don't carry around as much pocket watches and pocket knives. And in this one program, I had a gentleman reach into his pocket and guess what he had in his, in his pocket, you know? So he was proud of the fact that, you know, he had a, uh, a pocket knife and I didn't expect that. That was an unusual situation there too. So once again, you don't know what's going to, what's going to happen during these, uh, these programs for sure. Yeah. And I, you know, that's, that's, that's what makes it worth. Well, you know, I'm yeah. sure it makes it worthwhile for you and it would Absolutely. make it worthwhile for, uh, for me. Um, I usually ask, ask my guests who are, you know, involved in project, what, what the reaction has been to that project. But looking at your website, I mean, it's been uh, really, really positive, I guess. Yeah. We've got a lot of testimonials uh, there and, uh, that feels good. Um, and, and there's nothing more rewarding really. After you leave a program, you feel uplifted. You know, you feel like you've done some good, even though it's a little good, you know, and how long it lasts, I don't know. But there was some good done there that day. And, um, yeah, it's nice to have those testimonials from activities directors, you know, at these nursing homes and at these senior centers and um, and seniors, of course, most importantly. So, yeah, the reception has been been good and it's been uh, rewarding for sure yeah feels good yeah have you feel you know anybody to to look into that on a more academic basis because uh, you know talking about what we were saying earlier that you're doing something unique here mm-hmm. uh, and it seems to me it'd be a really good basis for a kind of uh, a study on mm-hmm. you know what people are getting out of it yeah i you know i've thought about because You know, the scope of what I understand is pretty narrow. (laughs) I'm not a neurologist. Um, You know, um, I'm not a specialist, as you know, probably a lot more about dementia than than I do. I've I've had some education on working with patients with dementia. I'm certainly not ignorant to it at all. But, yeah, I I would actually like to reach out to um, these people who would understand at a much deeper level what impact uh, positive uh, this specific program has. I mean, it's pretty much understood that reminiscing, that's been pretty well documented and smart people, brilliant people have determined that reminiscing is good. But, you know, this in particular, this program, I wonder, you know, what data would say, you know, how effective is it? And, um, and why is it effective and how it could be better? You know, those kinds of things. So you're right. I have thought about something along those lines, reaching out, you know. Yeah, because I, I think, you know, one, one kind of aspect of the show 
is we try to promote things which are not medical related um, because, yeah, I know a bit about dementia, but I'm not an expert on the, the medical side or the treatments. Mm. But the more and more I talk to people around the world is the effect and the effectiveness of just these social programs Mm. Um, in the way that, that you're presenting. It, it's getting people together and getting people to communicate. And I think sometimes mm. we lose the value of, you know, how important that is. Absolutely uh, true, because after a program, um, I do hear the seniors chatter about how awesome it was to get together. And they get together. You know, they have, um, you mentioned vinyl, so you probably like music, right? And music, talk about the ability of music to have people reminisce and reminisce. Uh, and they have these programs and they get together. But when they get together, probably for those programs, they're just watching and listening to the mm -hmm. presenter. And my goal, and they enjoy it a lot, um, and it has obviously a, a big purpose. But my goal is always to talk less and listen more and, and try to prompt people just like you're doing with me here today, get people to, to talk. Right. And so that is nice because when I leave, I do hear that this was nice. And there's sort of a camaraderie, um, a shared experience that they have uh, that they may not have known that they had, you know, whether it was a simple thing like playing marbles or now they have some commonality, if you will. So it is a good opportunity to get people talking and um, get people together and sharing their experiences, all of that. So yeah, it kind of hits on a lot of different, uh, a lot of different levels. And Hey, some of these things that we bring, they're not, um, they're not in people's memory banks. You know, I, when I'm talking about 1700s things, you know, I kind of jokingly said, Hey, anybody remember in the 1700s, you know, <laughs> something like that. And I don't even know if that's appropriate. I shouldn't say that. But anyway, um, yeah. So a lot of things are more history driven, I guess, you know, or, or discovery, which people, people do like to discover things. So I think a lot of people do. So, you know, it's not all in their zone wheelhouse. You know what I mean? It's not a, a perfect 1940s, 1950s. Some of it's a little earlier. Maybe their parents and grandparents utilized it and they still remember it, you know, even though they didn't, but they remember their, their parents or their grandparents kind of thing. So, you know, there's a little bit of a, everything, a little history, a little discovery, certainly a lot of reminiscing, but uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a little bit different for everyone too, depending on their age as well. So, yeah. Yeah, and I guess the other aspect is the, the tactile aspect. Mm. You're actually bringing artifacts so people can feel and touch, um, which, you know, is also another, you know, important aspect. Yes. Now, and that's, I'll tell you, that's the biggest challenge um, for the membership program versus the local program. The local program is great. You know, we pass along uh, these, you know what? A lot of people will come up after too because they have, they want to see a particular or a couple of particular artifacts. But you're right. The tactile aspect of it is, is big. It's a big part of the program. So in the membership program, they, the, the member doesn't have the luxury, if you will, of touching the artifact, right? So it's been my job to try to figure out how to make that reminiscence program of greater value, if you will, clinical value anyway. Um, so that's, that's a challenge to try to create imagery. That's, it's not going to replace the tactile aspect because it is so important, but to make it something that's definitely worthwhile is, is the continued challenge in the membership program, just to make it even more stimulating, more interesting um, for these seniors, even though they're not able to touch them. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, you know, just listening to you, I think it's great that, you know, you're not only thinking of the uh, the present, uh, obviously learning a lot about the past, but also looking to the future of, you know, how things can develop. Yeah, it's, it's stim you're right. It's a good way to put it. It's very stimulating because, wow, I couldn't have said it better. You're right. You're, you're focused on looking at reminiscing in the past, but uh, yeah, and how, you know, we're talking about maybe working with, neurologist or getting some more data or whatever it is to try to figure out how to make this better based on what we know now. So yeah, it incorporates so many things in my metal detecting, you know, passion and so forth. I mean, I couldn't be in a, a better spot as far as interest and exciting and um, satisfying, 
you know, uh, spot. So it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. It's very interesting and stimulating for sure. Well, unfortunately, uh, time is, is bringing us to, uh, to a close. Um, we've done, I think, 169 shows. Wow. Uh, and we've found fascinating aspects. And in you, we found another one, uh, to talk about because there are so many wide and varied things that, uh, that are going on, uh, trying to improve the quality of life for people living with dementia. Uh, I just want to congratulate you on what you've got together. It's a, you know, it's going back to what we were saying earlier, it's a totally unique aspect. Thank you, Pete. And thanks for um, having me on the show. And, and thanks for what you do to uh, educate the public uh, as far as dementia is concerned. I know that's a passion of yours. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. And thank you for doing what you do. Appreciate it very, very, very much. My thanks to Steve, and you can find out more about his work at memorydetecting.com. That's it for another edition. Thanks for listening, and hopefully you join me again on the D-Word podcast. Music.